Hello and welcome to my pre-recorded talk. My name is Michele Paulato and I'll be talking about the effect of subduction relief on megathrust sleep properties in Ecuador. This is work that I've carried out together with an undergraduate student called Yue Yu Zhang and it's part of the Fluid to Slip project um, that involves lots of other people and is led by Audrey Gao. Our study region is the source region of the magnitude 7.8 Pedernales earthquake in central Ecuador. This is a very interesting region uh, from the point of view of earthquake processes. In to on top of the megathrust earthquakes, uh, we also see slow afterslip uh, shown there um, in purple. Uh, we see slow slip earthquakes in pink and earthquake repeaters. I think uh, Caroline Chalumont will talk more about these interesting earthquake processes in a talk later in uh, this session. So these interesting and um, variable earthquake processes are related to the incoming slab topography. And we see two types of slab topography here. We see isolated, uh, sharp, small seamounts. Um, and these are the Atacama seamounts that are being subducted and are impacting the fora. And we also see uh, the subduction of a large-scale buoyant aseismic ridge, and that's the Carnegie Ridge here in the southern, southern part of the region. Uh, so I'll be showing some constraints on uh, the structure from seismic uh, tomography inversion based on data from uh, the HIPAA uh, resource cruises in 2019 and 2021. This is a map of the area, and I am uh, uh, presenting in particular uh, a 2D wide-angle seismic profile that uh, crosses the subduction zone from uh, west to east. It goes over one of the Atacamas seamounts, um, then crosses into the forearc, and at the eastern end um, uh, crosses into the source region of the Pedernales earthquake. It was shot at 75 meter uh, shot spacing and recorded on 38 ocean bottom seismometers at two kilometer spacing. So it's quite a dense um, data uh, collection. I'm showing an example of a receiver gather here on the right. Uh, this is one of the stations on the, one of the, on the Atacamas seamount. And you can see it's very high quality data and we were able to pick uh, first arrival travel times are up to 90 kilometer offsets. The inversion was pretty standard. It's a first arrival travel time inversion with regularized least squares uh, using Tomo 2D. Uh, I won't be going into much detail here, uh, but I'm showing here the L curve. So this is to tune the smoothing. And I've done some checkable tests and showing that uh, we have good resolution at um, a five kilometer uh, wavelength. These are uh, our results. This is our preferred final model. And we'll be focusing on a few features here. Uh, first, we'll look at the seamounts. Then we'll look at the properties of the incoming clay crust, and particularly the slab crust thickness. And then we'll look at the subduction um, uh, interface, and particularly the subduction channel in the source region of the Pedernales earthquake. So let's look at the seamounts first. Uh, we see from the topography there on the left uh, that the, uh, one of the Atacamet seamounts is about to be subducted. It's a few kilometers out from the, the formation front. And uh, in the satellite tomography profile, it shows a high velocity upper crust contrasting with the uh, sediments on either side. And it has a low velocity middle crust and a thickened crust. Uh, uh, increased crust of thickness. Now if we look at the gravity anomalies, and these are residual Google gravity anomalies that are calculated uh, based on data from uh, those cruises and previous uh, other data, then there is another um, gravity anomaly high ahead of this uh, seamount. And this is in a region of disruption in the fora where we see gravitational collapse um, and uh, lots of thrust faulting. So in the seismic profile, uh, we see similar, a similar structure to the other seamount with a high velocity bump at the top of the plate, a lower velocity middle crust, and, and the thickened uh, crustal thickness. 
Uh, so this uh, is a subducting seamount and it corresponds to an area of low interseismic coupling. We see the contours of the seismic coupling on the left on top of the gravity anomalies in yellow. Uh, so our observations uh, are in agreement with previous observations from multi-channel seismic data by Mark Yu and others, uh, published in 2016, and also match uh, some uh, uh, observations from local earthquake tomography by Leon Rios et al. in 2021. And the picture that is emerging is of uh, small uh, but sharp seamounts disrupting the, the forearc, causing first uplift and thrust faulting and then in the lee of the seamount uh, subsidence and um, gravitational collapse. This results in a disrupted plate interface and low interseismic coupling. And it's similar to what has been observed, for example, in New Zealand by Pedley et al. 2010, but also in other places like Costa Rica and Japan and in analog experiments. Now let's have a look at the properties of the slab uh, more widely. Uh, we have picked the Moho depth based on the 7.5 kilometers per second velocity contour. And we see that uh, on the western end of the profile, there's a seven kilometers across the thickness, so just slightly thickened. Uh, but on the eastern end, uh, this is almost double at 13 kilometers. We can compare these thicknesses to um, those found uh, across the Carnegie Ridge. This is a profile from Sayaris et al. 2005 that crosses the ridge from north to south. And we see that 13 kilometers isn't quite the full thickness of the ridge. Um, but it's what we find on the flanks. So in, on our profile from west to east, we are crossing into the uh, Carnegie Ridge domain. Let's have a look now at the plate interface properties. In the middle part of the section, in the outer fora, we see a low velocity fora thrust uh, that is laterally heterogeneous. The plate interface has some topography. Uh, we have the subducting seamounts. And when we move down dip to the eastern end of the profile, we see a more laterally homogeneous structure. We see a fast overriding plate, a low velocity subduction channel, and of course the thickened crust that we discussed in the previous slide. Um, so this is more typical of what we might see uh, on the plate interface in a region of uh, standard stick-slip behavior um, and uh, mega thrust earthquake potential. And in fact, this matches the source region of the Pedernales earthquake, which I've highlighted there in red dashes. So these are our take home points. We see that small scale subducting seamounts cause a region of tectonic disruption and weak seismic coupling. Uh, there's also a region of weak coupling around. Uh, the uh, seamounts and anomalous sleep behavior, and this is where we find slow sleep earthquakes. And then we see that large scale subducting relief, like the Carnegie Ridge, can be strongly coupled. And in fact, the source region of the Pedernales earthquake um, is on the edge of the Carnegie Ridge, on top of the uh, edge of the Carnegie Ridge. It's a more laterally homogeneous plate interface with a low VP subduction channel, and there's a high VP overriding plate. So thanks for all for your attention. If you have any questions, please send them to my email m.paulato at imperial.ac.uk. Thanks and goodbye.